Welcome to The Shaman's Path, a journey into the realms of ancient wisdom, modern healing, and the mystical unknown. I'm your host, Nicole Berrios, shamanic healer, acupuncturist, and guide on this adventure to other realms of reality. Join me as we tread the path less traveled, exploring the deep roots of shamanism, the art of healing, and the profound connection between the human spirit and the world around us. We'll explore how shamanic healing can transform emotional pain and trauma into strength and resilience. Together, we'll unlock the doors to your inner power, helping you become your best and most powerful self. We'll go down the rabbit hole of consciousness, diving deep into topics like energy work, the spirit world, ancestral healing, past life regression, and how the natural world impacts us. So grab your metaphorical drum and come journey with us into the heart of shamanism. We'll see you on The Shaman's Path. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of The Shaman's Path. I am your host, Nicole Berrios. Happy New Year. It doesn't feel like the new year because we're in the dead of winter, but technically it is a new year. Happy New Year. I wasn't really planning on taking over a month off from the podcast, but it just kind of worked out that way. And um, I suppose that's probably going to become a tradition going forward in the future to have a really long break in the winter time because apparently I needed it. I took an actual vacation where like a scheduled time off vacation and then I kind of started to go back to my regular routine and then I got COVID which I've never had before and um, it wasn't very bad. Oh, although, on, on a side note, because I'm an acupuncturist, whenever I get any sort of sickness, I have a moment where I get excited about it. it this is going to sound super weird. <laughs> if there's any other acupuncturists out there or just people who study Chinese medicine theory, um, you'll have to let me know if you do this too. But whenever I get any kind of sickness, I get super excited because it helps me understand wind pathogens. <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail about this other than wind pathogens and the Shanghan Loon and the Wen Bing for anybody who knows what I'm talking about. If you ever get a sickness and you you can like better, you finally really understand what the ancient texts were talking about, like in the Shanghan Loon and the Wen Bing, and you know, you really understand what a Taiyang pathogen is once because now you have it. Um, it's exciting. And then you're like, oh God, but I'm sick. So uh, that's that's what I went through. <laughs> I got COVID, definitely had a moment where I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I got a wind cold. Yep, this is a Taiyang wind cold. And oh, it's transitioning into a wind heat. And oh, there's a little bit of wind dry there, too. So um, yeah, that's how I began my new year is with my um, personal study of wind pathogens in Chinese medicine. And um, I was wondering how COVID was going to be different from any other bug and um it wasn't really other than at the very end of the sickness my sense of smell and taste started to act weird i didn't lose them entirely but they definitely acted weird and um that was it so i'm grateful we're we're all good and um yeah and i'm i'm grateful to my body for getting me through it and i'm grateful for my knowledge of Chinese medicine for helping me to make sense of what was happening and to just better understand the the Chinese medicine classics. So I had a month off. I wound up having an entire month off. Not exactly in the way I was anticipating, but also it was kind of nice. Uh, there was a lot of time in my pajamas and a lot of binge watching of uh, shows and a lot of sleeping <laughs> it was actually just it was kind of great I feel like I really embodied winter that's what um, this episode is about which we'll get into in like the meat of the episode but I just I wanted to give an update yeah I got sick at right after my vacation and wound up having like an accidental month off <laughs> but I'm not complaining about it so welcome back um, I guess we'll call this a new season. 
I don't know how I'm going to number this on um, my Spotify for podcasters. Like that's that's the platform that I use to record my episodes, by the way. So um, maybe this will be season two. I, I don't really know. We'll just call this like unofficially season two. Welcome to season two, everybody. Happy 2024. So I am recording this on January 25th, and um, today is the full moon. It's the first full moon of the new year. I am excited for this full moon because a full moon in January in the middle of winter, I don't know, it's, it's, got, it's got some magic to it. And I'll, I'll, there's some astrological reasons as to why I think that is for this particular year. Um, but this moon is known as the wolf moon. I just learned why they call it that. I've heard, I've heard that before. Like I've heard that over the last couple of years that the January full moon is known as the wolf moon. So I just learned why. I think it's pretty cool. Apparently at this time of year in woodland areas of, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, wolves are more active at this time of year. There's a lot more howling and like howling in packs and um, howling for prolonged periods of time. So in, I think it's more in the springtime when wolves howl, it's more like it's shorter, shorter spans of howling and it's more for mating. And at this time of year, in the dead of winter, the like pack like whole packs of wolves will howl together and they howl for a long period of time like 30 to 60 seconds at a time of just straight howling and so in the anglo-saxon tradition they started calling it the wolf moon because of that and i believe in some native american traditions they referred to it as the wolf moon or something similar as well like for the same reason and so i thought that was kind of cool because I feel like wolves really embody the spirit of winter. One, because they're they're out. You think of them. They're out in the snow um, when it's cold. They're, they're surviving just like the rest of us. Like they're surviving, but they're also like coming together in their packs for survival and for companionship and just, you know, being being a part of something. I think it's really cool and I'll, we'll get more into that in the meat of the episode because this episode was all about it is going to be all about embodying and embracing the spirit of winter and the spirit of wolves I haven't really done much on the podcast with um, working with power animals so I thought that this would be a really perfect opportunity to do that so we'll get into that later but today's the, the full wolf moon we also just crossed into Aquarius season, and um, Aquarius season is, um, well, Aquarius is um, an air sign, so air signs, and especially uh, the Aquarius sign, is like big picture, it's a big picture sort of sign, like um, innovation, ideas, downloads, brain waves. And this is, I don't know if this happens to anybody else, but whenever we cross into a, an air sign, I've noticed this the most with Gemini, um, probably because I am a Gemini, but um, I just noticed it this year with Aquarius season. And I think it happened with Libra season last year too. I'm like trying to remember, but last year's kind of a blur, but for sure, just a couple days ago, as we crossed over into Aquarius season, I like had this crazy burst of ideas and I had to spend several hours just writing my thoughts down and recording ideas. And I was like, whoa, because, you know, I had a whole month off. I've been hibernating and not really doing much of anything. And all of a sudden, like the day of Aquarius season, boom, all these ideas and downloads came through. And I'm like, whoa, this is cool. I'm like, I'm, I guess I'm picking up on the, the air vibe, the big thinking vibe. I don't really know. I'm curious if anybody else experiences that. And if you do, let me know. Or am I just the lone weirdo out here? I mean, I guess that's possible. But combine Aquarius season with this uh, full wolf moon, which is in the sign of Leo. 
And I feel like it's a really interesting concoction. <laughs> like we've got, we've got the dead of winter. Um, it's cold. In, in Chinese medicine, five element theory, we're in the water time of year. So it's like it's cold, water, like depth, you know, emotion, um, hibernating. But then we just cross over into Aquarius season where it's like from the depths, like you get stillness and then come clarity and downloads and innovation. And then we've got this fiery full moon in the middle of winter because Leo is a fire sign. And I don't know, it feels really magical to me. Uh, yesterday in my in my acupuncture clinic, I... I did, I, I have special points that I do for the seasons. It's like a five element thing. So I worked on somebody that I hadn't seen since we transitioned into winter. So I did the um, water points, like to harmonize the water element on this person. And I had an extra needle that I didn't know what to do with. And I was like, I wonder what, what should I do with this needle? And they said, just do something magical. I'm like, hmm, something magical. Okay. And then I thought like, oh, you know what? That Leo full moon is tomorrow. That's a, that's a fire sign. I'm like in the middle of winter. I'm like, we just did all this water stuff. I'm like, we should totally do a fire point. So I threw in a fire point that I really only ever do in the middle of summer. It felt kind of weird doing it in the middle of winter, but also it did feel magical. It felt like I balanced, I balanced everything out for this person and when I was doing it, I'm like, I kind of want this treatment done. I'm like, dang, I should do this on myself. So there's definitely some magic to be harnessed right now. So that's kind of what's happening in the stars. There's like the depths of winter, you know, we're hibernating. We're like still in the thick of it. It's cold. It's where I am anyways. It's been raining a lot, which is fabulous. I know it's snowing in other parts of um the United States. I don't know about other parts of the Northern Hemisphere, but other parts of the United States, it's cold, it's snowing. Where I am, it's been rainy and gloomy. It feels like winter. And But from, like I said, from the stillness, we've got like this Aquarian energy coming through that helps provide insights and downloads and all mental things. And now we've got like the fire from this wolf moon in this wolf leo moon i don't know it's just very cool so that's what's happening in the stars right now if there's any like if you want to do any magic or rituals with this i what i personally would do and you guys i'm gonna start a patreon this year if not a pay if not on patreon there will be some sort of a monthly membership because like i need to be able to actually do this stuff with you guys. But I haven't started it yet because, you know, I wound up having an accidental month off. But I'm getting there. I'm working on it. I bra I like brainstormed uh, during my crazy Aquarius download um, everything that's going to go into the Patreon. It's going to be super cool. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to do if you want to do any magic or rituals with this new moon, here's some ideas. You could bring some fire into it because it's a Leo fire sign full moon. Um, that could be lighting a candle. That could be lighting a fire, like if you have a fire pit or a fireplace or something. It could be, you could also be kind of embracing the water element from the winter season. So you could like have a bowl of water. You could put a can, like a floating candle on top of the bowl of water and you could just like meditate you know like the candle meditation like the gazing where you just stare at the candle flame like on like floating in water you could do that um you could call in like wind energy um, like for the air from Aquarius season um, that could be as simple as just going outside and feeling the air on your skin and if it's actually windy outside even better um, although something, this is interesting. I've noticed this whenever I do weather work, um, weather shamanic work, is if I go outside with the intent of feeling the wind, it gets windy. Even if it's only for a few minutes, it's wild. So 
who knows if you go outside with the intention of feeling wind there might be a gust of wind <laughs> like you don't have to do anything crazy and if it's not cloudy where you are you could just go outside at night and look at the full moon you could look at the full moon and if there's one moon out of this whole year that you feel compelled to howl at it should be this one <laughs> it's okay make your neighbors think that you're crazy you can go outside and howl at the wolf moon <laughs> and if you're feeling self-conscious about it you could always go into your car and do this <laughs> which I have totally done by the way there's no shame in it you can go howl at the moon it feels good so there's just some really simple ideas that you can use to kind of embrace what's happening in the stars right now. So let's embody the spirit of winter. I've talked about this before. Well, I did. I, I talked a little bit about winter with my uh, winter solstice podcast that I did like over a month ago at this point because I had my accidental break. And like I went into it a little bit there, but I kind of wanted to go deeper with it here because this is what has been the most prevalent for me lately. The, the more entrenched I get in my spiritual practice and my shamanic practice and also the farther away I get from childbirth like wow <laughs> it was really hard for me to do anything for a while after giving birth and um, she's going to be five next month so this is like a years long process but the further into my shamanic practice that I get the easier it is for me to really feel the spirits of the seasons and the directions and the elements that are associated with each season. I had always been in, like aware of the shifts of the seasons and to an extent kind of able to like sense how they were different. But yeah, really just in the last couple of years, I've been able to really feel it. And to really understand what it means to honor the spirits of the seasons. So, you know, in, in shamanism, everything has a spirit. Everything. The weather, the seasons, the directions, the elements, everything has its own spirit. And like it has its own personality, it has its own vibe and flavor and wintertime is associated with the north, the direction of the north. Um, depending on the tradition, it could be associated with the earth element, but because I, um, you know, I'm a Chinese medicine practitioner, I kind of associate wintertime with water because um, – Water is the element of wintertime from five element theory. I think it's appropriate, personally, because water has depth. Water, water is emotional, you know, like you, you can see things on the surface, but there's so much depth and unknown underneath the surface and the unknown is scary and the emotion for the water element is fear it makes it, it just makes sense to me and because the days are short and we have long nights and it's cold and we're kind of just resigned to being inside more at this time of year, although it's a little bit backwards where I live because people want to go outside more because the weather's nicer. <laughs> it's more favorable at this time of year, but it's also like hard because it's still winter and you still want to hibernate. So um, it's interesting living in Southern Arizona, but we're still in winter time and we're still, our bodies naturally want to go within to hibernate. And when you're in this space, like when, when you're having time off, 
if you get sick at this time of year and you're kind of just stuck at home, you're going to be in your thoughts and you're going to be probably addressing some deep fears because you're in a still place and just like water that may look still on the surface, who knows what's underneath the surface. And when you finally get to a place like wintertime, when you've got time off and it's just more quiet and there's not a lot of stuff happening, you can actually start to go beneath the surface and access some of this depth, which is partly exciting uh, if you come at it from a place of curiosity, but it's also scary. And that's where this fear thing comes in. That's part of the five element cycle Like water is, um, the emotion of water is fear. And when it comes to doing shamanic work with the spirit of winter and how you embody it, what, what do I mean by embody? There's a technique in, in shamanism called merging. It's more of an advanced technique. You're not supposed to do it. Like in the training that I did, you weren't supposed to do merging until like your second phase of training. Um, There were a couple instances where I did it before then and like it just was spontaneous and it just naturally happened. And my my mentor was like, hey, don't do that. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But it it just came naturally to me. And um, merging is a technique where you literally merge your spirit with the spirit of something else. If you know anything about working with spirits and doing this sort of work, you got to be careful if you're going to merge your spirit with another spirit. You have to make sure that it's a benevolent spirit. You have to make sure you know how to uh, unmerge. And you have to know like where, where to draw the line. Like it's a, it, it can be murky. And that's why this is more of an advanced technique. So like merging is a really cool part of of shamanic work. And like once you get really into it, it's a very cool way to honor the spirits of the world around you. And so when I talk about embodying the spirit of winter, it's kind of like a merge, but not not fully. What I what I mean by embodying it is to really like you know, like that phrase, be the change you want to see in the world. It's kind of like that, like be the winter. And I think like why this is important is because, well, one, it syncs you up with the cycle of, you know, wherever you are in the wheel of the year, which makes you feel more connected. It makes you feel more grounded. It makes you feel more clarity, and more at peace. Ultimately, shamanic work is all about healing yourself and empowering yourself and just being at peace with where you are in the world and on the planet and with your role in the whole. We are all individual parts of a whole collective. And there's so much anxiety and so much depression and just so many mental health issues and identity crises and all of that. And I very, very deeply feel that so much of that could be resolved if people did techniques like this. Embodying winter or spring or summer, whatever. Embodying where, whatever and wherever you are in the wheel of the year or in your season of life without trying to change it and without running away from it because winter can be a challenging time of year because it is so dark and it is so still and there's that depth and that discomfort of whatever is underneath the surface of the water. But if you can sit with that stillness and sit with that discomfort and trust that you will be okay, you will greatly benefit from it. And I talked about this, like today, the first full moon of the new year is the wolf moon. That's really important here because when you're doing this sort of work, when you're sitting with this stillness and this discomfort and like the harshness of winter, 
you can call upon the spirit of the wolf to help you get through this time. So I, I love working with power animals. They're one of my favorite, favorite um, guides. That wasn't the word I was looking for. My favorite spiritual partners to work with when I'm doing shamanic work. I love working with my power animals. I, I do power animal retrievals for my clients all the time. I am planning on, I'm not planning on, I am creating a course on power animals this year that should be coming out within the next couple of months. And in that course, you'll, you'll learn all the details about this. But for now, just like a little snippet, you can have pow- you can have multiple different power animals over the course of your life. You can have some that are just with you throughout your whole life. You can have some that come in for periods of your life. And if you don't know what a power animal is, it is the spirit of an animal that comes to you to bring you a piece of its power. It's usually some sort of quality that you are lacking in your life but you need in your life in order to succeed in a particular area. Power animals are very cool to work with. And like you can, you know, if you work with a shaman or you like take a a course like the one that I'm going to release soon and you find your power animal, that's great. Like that, that's your power animal for the time being and could be your power animal indefinitely, you know, like for maybe even the rest of your life. And then as you grow and evolve, other power animals might come in. And sometimes you can just em- embrace or work with a power animal for a specific purpose or for just a specific time of the year. And sometimes they just, they come in for really brief things. Like I I've worked with a couple of power animals in that capacity that are not my like everyday power animals. And so like it, basically what I'm saying is you do not have to have the wolf as one of your power animals to be able to work with the spirit of the wolf. In fact, this is going to be part of my spirit messages, um, in the next segment, the wolf right now is encouraging you to work with it they named the moon after it like it's it's okay to work with a particular power animal at a particular time of year just for a brief period of time for a specific purpose and you can work with and embody the spirit of wolf to help you get through winter what does that look like I am all for simple. When I do my Patreon, we will do we we will do more specific rituals, like things like tangible things that you can do. For now, you can do a really simple thing where you pull up a picture of a wolf or wolves, a pack of wolves on your phone. Or you can print a picture out. If you've got National Geographic's laying around and you can find a picture in there of wolves, just open it up, put it on your altar, or just look at it. Just look at pictures of wolves. And what I want you to do, kind of like what I mentioned earlier about how you can use the elements of this time of year to kind of embrace the, the wolf moon and the winter time and all that, like how you put a candle floating on water. You can do something like that. You can just pull up a picture of a wolf. You could even have your candle floating on water right next to the picture. And you can just look, just look and meditate with what you see from the wolves. Look at its fur. Look at its ears. Look into its eyes. Really, really look into its eyes and allow yourself to get into a meditative state. If it's helpful, you can download a shamanic drum track onto your phone and you could put that on and you could play the shamanic drum track while you just stare at a picture of a wolf or a pack of wolves and see what happens. See where you go. All shamanic drum tracks will have something called a callback. So a shamanic drum beat is very fast 
and that is to help get you into a trance-like state. This is what allows you to take a shamanic journey. And that's what puts you into the spirit realm or allows you to travel to the spirit realm. Every drum track, every shamanic drum track will have what's called a callback. And that is at the end of the drum track, the drum beat will change. It's a very noticeable change and it slows down. And that's called the callback because it's, it's meant to call you back from your trance-like state. You're not supposed to stay in this state of traveling between realms forever. We're, we're humans in a body. We need to come back to earth. So if you're worried about, you know, putting on a drum track and like meditating with the wolf spirit and like getting lost somewhere, if you won't, if you've got a proper drum track, it'll call you back. And even if you don't have a proper drum track, eventually you will come back to earth. Just make sure that you're in a safe space. Obviously make sure you're at home. You're not driving. Hopefully you're not going to be meditating while driving or lighting candles while you're driving. I feel like that's just common sense, but who knows? There's, (laughs) I just feel like I need to issue a disclaimer. Make sure you're in a safe space. If you're going to be doing this where you won't be interrupted, preferably, and just meditate with wolf. You can just look at it. You can imagine what it would be like to run with the wolves. What does it What could you imagine it feels like to run your hands along a wolf's fur? What must it feel like? What must it feel like to have a tail? What must it feel like to have paws that go into the snow? What must it feel like to run wild and to howl and to have your pack beside you? Like, what must all of that feel like? I don't know about you, but me just talking about this makes me feel powerful. That, my friends, is the power of a power animal. That's why we call it a power animal. Animals in and of themselves are inherently powerful. So everybody is. So is people. So so are people. We just tend to forget it. Animals are particularly powerful because they don't have the brain power that we do. They are much more in their instinctual bodies, which allows them to just be who they are and who they're meant to be. And you as a human can embrace that by just working with the spirit of animals. And like I said, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. All you need to do is just look at a picture of wolves. You can put on a drum beat and you can just imagine what it would feel like to be a wolf in the winter. And how a wolf must survive in the winter. And it feels powerful. And it feels magical. And this this is how you embrace the spirit of winter. And also embrace the spirit of the wolf. And use the two together. And if you can, go outside and howl at the wolf. Or howl at the moon like a wolf. Like with your actual voice. Our voices are so powerful. And if, if you do this, it's almost like... This is like part of the merge thing that I was talking about earlier. It's like taking the spirit of an animal and giving it actual life by using your voice. It's like using your voice to give a voice to the spirit of an animal. It's a very cool process. And it will make you feel powerful too. And ultimately embracing and embodying the spirit of winter, like I said, it just means sitting with it and accepting it for what it is. And also knowing that right around the corner is spring. It's going to be shifting really soon, especially in Southern Arizona, because we have such a short winter time here. And so really, this is the time to just sit to sit in stillness, to sit in the darkness, to feel yourself embraced and enveloped by this harsh but also nurturing spirit of winter. And even you can imagine feeling yourself surrounded by a pack of wolves. And like, just how how powerful that must feel to just be one of them. And this will help you get through the rest of winter. And in my next episode, I'm going to be talking about in bulk and Chinese New Year and the Year of the Dragon, which is 
I feel the real new year. That's where you can actually start to implement the things that you wanted to do in 2024. Right now is not the time. And if you've been feeling pressure to do things because it's it's a new year, new you, you know, all those slogans that people have, please try not to pressure yourself. It's not the right time, but it will be really soon. Just hang in there. And we'll, we'll get more into that in my next episode. So that, my friends, is how you embrace and embody the spirit of winter and how you work with the spirit of the wolf. And also, I just want to um, make sure that I'm, I'm clear. Be sure to thank these spirits. Thank, if you're going to work with the wolf spirits, make sure you thank them. If you're going to, you know, just embody the spirit of winter, make sure you thank it. Thank it for its wisdom, its depth, its harshness, its nurturingness. It is interesting to be both harsh and nurturing at the same time, but wintertime feels like wearing a blanket. It's, it, I can't describe it any other way than that, but it is also harsh at the same time. It's interesting. But be sure to thank these spirits. And if you do, if you put on a drum track and you kind of like get yourself into a journey-like state, you can also ask the spirits of the wolf to keep you safe while you're doing this. Like all you have to do is ask. You can even get like a wolf totem of some sort or a rock or anything that kind of represents the spirit of wolf and you can keep it with you in your pocket. You can put it up on an altar and just look at it for the next week or two or longer And once we've transitioned out of winter time, you know, you can thank it again. Like, thank you, spirit of wolves, for helping me get through this time. And thank you to the winter for all of the lessons. And welcome in the spring. And so you probably guessed that spirit messages today are coming from the spirit of wolf. I wanted to preface this by saying that a wolf spirit is actually not one of my power animals. And I, this will be a key part of my power animal class that I'll be releasing soon. I'm hoping by March. But when you get a power animal retrieval, like when a power animal comes into your life and decides that it is going to work with you indefinitely, it is yours and it is meant to be private and sacred. You are really not meant to go around posting about it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever social platform you're using. It's It's meant to be private and sacred, and if you dishonor the power animal or the spirit of the animal by just, you know, posting it all over social media and using it as like a status symbol or anything like that, if you disrespect it like that, it can choose to go away. Like, it can choose to not be in a relationship with you anymore, and... Therefore, I always, always, always tell my clients when I do power animal retrievals for them that they need to keep it to themselves. And if they do really feel like they just need to tell somebody what their power animal was, you know, like if they just want to talk about their experience, they can. If it's like a confidant or, you know, a spouse or a best friend or just somebody that they trust that they know would hold the sacredness of the experience for them. So I just, I just wanted to say that with whatever power animal you're working with, whether, whether you get a, an actual power animal retrieval, or if you're just working with one, like what we're doing with, with Wolf for this particular cycle of getting through winter and the Wolf Moon, it's really meant to be sacred. 
if you want to tell some of your friends that you're doing this, like that's, that's fine. And they could do it with you too, but really like any downloads, any insights, any experiences that you have with working with Wolf Spirit, you really should keep it on the down low and just, just honor it. Like shamanism is all about honoring everything, honoring the spirits of everything and honoring just the sacredness and the integrity of everything. So I just wanted to throw that out there before I get into wolf spirit messages. I wanted to read a passage from the Spirit Animal Oracle Deck by Colette Baron reed I love, love, love this deck. I will put a link to it in the show notes. It has the most beautiful artwork, most beautiful artwork of how many are in here? It's uh, like 68, I think, 68 different animals, just beautiful artwork and really, really deep messages. And I thought that the message from this particular um, guidebook was appropriate. And then everything else that I've said about wolves from earlier in the episode is all applicable. And honestly, really the ultimate message that I'm getting from that I'm channeling from wolf for you guys today is to work with it and you get your own messages and your own downloads and insights. But here's just a little something to wet your palate. Wolf spirit, turn knowledge into wisdom, oracle message. Wolf spirit leads you deep into the enchanted forest that holds the secrets to your life. Can you sense her beckoning you to follow, asking you to take all you have learned and all you are learning and make it yours? Can you integrate it all into your body, mind, and spirit? Whatever lessons you learned along the way, do not leave them unexamined. Be loyal to your dreams, to your soul, and to turning knowledge into wisdom and experience into magic. You are the one you have been waiting for. Be still and know that the sound of your heart beats in harmony with the whole world. The appearance of wolf spirit is an auspicious omen that says you are truly in alignment with your destiny. And here's a protection message from wolf spirit. What is unknown is still yet to be discovered. When wolf spirit appears, you are being told not to pretend you know something when you don't. You won't impress anyone with a little bit of knowledge. In fact, you rob yourself of a true experience and education if you tell yourself you are done learning or you don't have to know something. Be open, be humble, be teachable, and the world will open itself up for you like magic. Now is the time to look into the world with reverence and awe and an insatiable curiosity. You will never grow old if you are willing to keep learning. Wolf Spirit is waiting to be your mystical, loving guide. The end. I have to admit, I did not read that before, beforehand, before the episode. Um, And I thought that was really interesting that it talked about stillness and the, um, yeah, the, what the heck was it? I literally, literally just read this. Yeah, just the lessons that you've learned and the stillness going into your soul. Like, it just, it seemed very fitting with everything I was saying about the winter spirit and the water element and the stillness and the depth underneath the surface. So, there are your spirit messages from Wolf Spirit. And that is all I have for you guys for today. I'm super excited for the this coming year and the Patreon membership and the Power Animal course. It's all going to be so cool. Like I'm super excited to be able to like be bringing this information forward to people who want to learn it and who want to embody this in their everyday life. And I'm also excited because by me creating this it will, it will be a really good outlet for me to also do the same thing in, in a like structured, organized way. 
Like, I'm so excited. Stay tuned for more details. I was just going to say, if you're not on my email list, get on my email list. But I'm in the process of creating said email list. So I suppose for the time being, just follow me on Instagram. My current Instagram handle is at Path of Wellness Accu. I will link to that in the show notes. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or just want to share any stories, if, if you have like a cool experience with Wolf Spirit that comes through after listening to this, I would love to hear about it. You can send me an email at info at pathofwellnessaccu.com or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I would love to hear all about it. Thank you all so much for listening. I look forward to seeing you guys in another couple of weeks for Imbolc and Chinese New Year. Imbolc is Bridget's holiday. And Bridget is one of my favorite, favorite deities. I've worked with her since the very beginning of my shamanic training. And I'm very, very excited to share her wisdom with you in the next episode. So until then, thanks again. And I will catch you on the next episode of The Shaman's Path. If you enjoyed this episode and are finding this show valuable, please consider leaving us a review on Apple iTunes, telling your friends, or sharing on social media. This helps us get the word out about the awesomeness of shamanic healing so that more people can discover all it has to offer. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next episode of The Shaman's Path.